Welcome back, Green Lanterns Undefeated Rescue, and we're continuing with the Gear Showcase series. We're back on the Colossus. Uh, decent amount of people in here, but we'll head out and showcase some gear. Okay, so we are back in the dungeon, GM1, and we are going over Phantom Storm. So this is the last of uh, the gear for Venom Storm. Actually, we'll get into the floor to showcase that off. So this is the last of the ordnance launchers, um, Venom Storm. Unfortunately, the two I have have really good rolls on them, so I can't I can't showcase them without the damage rolls. So I got one with 200 gear damage, and then one with 225. I'm just gonna stick with this one because it's got some recharge on it, so I can show it off a little bit more. Actually, we'll we'll stick with this one. Um, I shouldn't have too many issues. This is a the test Colossus, so it, it should get recharged back really quickly. Um, and with all my test builds, they only have like armor and gear recharge. That's it. So you shouldn't be seeing a lot of extra damage on these. So if you're seeing like the numbers that I'm getting for combos or whatever, uh, that should be like the bottom end. You should hopefully be getting better numbers based on your build. Um, I just want to also showcase that I'm using the Fist of the Crucible. Uh, most people want to use Green Solvent because when you're doing a combo, it gives you 200% more damage and that applies to everything, not just things that have been um primed with acid by green solvent anything that does a combo uh green solvent is going to give that 200 percent uh, perk too so i don't want to showcase that off because that's adding 200 percent gear damage to or sorry combo this just adds more to my combos so i want to stick with fist of the crucible because it's got some more recharge on it and i'm trying to showcase off the order of the your storm so venom storm is um uh the cataclysm uh version of titan's hail so basically, if you look at the numbers, they're actually very different. So Titan's Hail does more damage and it's better against armor. However, Venom Storm is acid and it has acid effect, which is 100, which means it's going to instantly uh, um, prime targets. Uh, it, so it does less damage initially, but it does prime them. And because it's a detonator, it also detonates. Uh, Recharges are the same. They're six. Not too bad. That's actually not that bad. That's a little a little bit on the higher side, but it's really not that bad. Um, and then their radius is the same, which is three, which is kind of small. But you'll see with like these style mortars, like with, with uh, Final Judgment, it's one mortar. And it, it's radius increased by one, which would sound better. But it's not because when these do volleys, you have a little bit more control over them, their trajectory. And they kind of spread out. Uh, so... Um, I think these style of mortars are better than the single style, but that's my perspective on it. Um, and then, uh, so the masterwork perk for Storm Vent or Storm Vent, <laughs> Venom Storm, um, it's an upgraded uh, burst mortar. Uh, a combo effect is blast, which is what the uh, the Colossus is, is kind of known for. Is their blast effect for combos, and then it fires a volley of eight instead of ground. So this is where the big difference between Titan Hail and Venom Storm is. So with Venom Storm, or sorry, with Titan's Hail, when you launch a volley, it only launches four of them. Where with uh, Venom Storm, it'll launch eight. So basically, it fires off eight volleys. So you're kind of stuck in that position. There's a way out of it where you use this, your your support ability, and then you just spam it to use it. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in dungeons. I'm not really sure why, but it definitely works in strongholds. Um, but we'll go over here and showcase it. Okay, this is Future Defeated Rescue. Uh, I want to show you guys how to do the uh, the canceling animation animation on um, Venom Storm. So and this works for all of the uh, mortars. Uh, well, at least the ones with the volleys. So Titan's Hail and Venom Storm. So basically, what you'll do is you'll you'll prep it, do your alt ability, and then while your uh, support ability is on cooldown, you can do it again and move while you're doing it. So you kind of just so just to go over it, just so uh, it's it's clear, I'm gonna use my support, start launching, do my support again. As you can see, it's on cooldown right now, and you can actually move forward. So I can even run with it. Uh, a little a little crazy, a little complicated, and uh, but 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 it works. Oh. So. The cool thing about this is, is you can kind of change the directory with it. And because it's eight uh, volleys, it, you can just kind of like, just drop it up here and just kind of move around and spam it. Um, you're going to have to be careful of being on like archways and things because that can limit your, your overall spread. I 
But as you can see, like, we'll showcase it here. Um, so you can see that they're getting primed. It's a little difficult, but they are definitely getting primed from that green, and then they're just comboing. So the one thing that could be, see where they're like high mind cover, I think I could still get them. No, didn't hit them at all. That was odd. I've never seen them run behind cover like that. Okay, let's see if we can do a spread where we can get all of them. So we got one of them. So if you can see the spread's a little crazier or a little bit more aggressive. Uh, for distance further away, but that's pretty much the way Tight Tail was as well. The fact that this can prime and detonate it makes it very serviceable on its own. Like you, you don't you don't need anything to prime them with. It already does that on its own, and it does really good damage. Um, approximately like nine thousand per volley. And it does really well against groups. Uh, took their shield down almost instantly. Let's test it against their shield. Yep, like one volley alone took down their shield a majority of their health. But it's GM1. We've come to expect that. So we'll take the storm on. So this is the downside to this. Is if they're going to squirrely moving around a lot, you're kind of going to have some issues with this. As long as you can get them to, uh, it's a little bit more of an advanced technique. If you can get them into a corner where they're against like a wall, the blast radius from the mortar will hit them. So you don't even have to be like super exact with it. But if they're out in like the open, it's, it's a little bit trickier. So we got an armored enemy type, we'll see how it does, oh, it's frozen, that sucks. Alright, we'll see how it works against the armored enemy type. Yeah, GM1 takes them out perfectly fine. We'll clear out the last of, uh, the last of these outlaws and take on the job. Okay, so, now this, this is where you're going to have a lot of issues with this. It, it works just like every other mortar cannon. Um, if they're moving around charging at you all the time, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's hard to hit them. Do their ult. Uh, instantly took them down in GM1. So, nothing special. Um, very powerful. Uh, the fact that it, it primes in combos makes it very, very, very good. But uh, we'll go into GM3 and check it out there. Okay, so, GM3 and Colossus. Uh, going over uh, Venom Storm. So, okay. We'll go in here and showcase it off. Oh, almost got him. So, it's hard to tell that it's less powerful because we're in GM3, because it's still doing a lot of damage. But it, so before I was pretty much, and then the combo effect is what's really coming through now. Because they're a little bit more tanky, you can see that combo effect. And if you were watching my uh, my alt gauge, it was it was going up really quickly. So as you can see, it, in GM1, we were kind of just killing them with one mortar. Um, and now we're not necessarily killing them, so they're getting that like splash damage of acid, which is priming them, and I'm able to do the combos. Uh, but it, it seems like one volley's not taking them down on its own. It takes about two, but at that point, they've already been primed, so another one should take them down with the combo damage. We'll see how it does against shields. So not very, not very powerful against shields. And 
And then if you can get them in a corner and they don't move, you should be able to get that splash damage on them from the mass ones. So not, not super powerful. And then this is where it's going to be hard because you get you got to be really good at hitting these air targets. It's not impossible because you do have the trajectory, but it can be a little difficult. Okay. You see this this in, this guy right here is prime because I need him and he moved onto the stairs uh, down the stairs in the mortar. I wasn't able to uh, finish him off with the. But it, so just to clarify, that is how you're priming. You are in fact priming with acid. able to prime them because I was keeping them kind of in the corner, which is a little bit more advanced tactics. I'm not trying to go over that, but we're just going to get rid of them. So none of those hit just because like the way the trajectory works, you kind of have to like bring it in because they're on like a weird spot. So I'm going to have to reposition, unfortunately. And it's because of the spread too, like it's hard to determine on the spread where exactly it's at. Uh, so that's something you need to be aware of. This is where it really kind of shines on its own because you can just kind of throw these volleys at a, a group that's spawning in and just kind of just take care of them, just clean them up before they have a chance to come in. So we got some armored enemies. Let's see if we can get them to separate. Okay. Where are they? Okay. So here are the armored guys. Let's check the see what we do against them. So this, so this, see how he's like charging me? I can only I have to keep repositioning. See, he's charging me again after I let off a volley. So I was able to get him and prime him a little bit, but if they're charging you like that, it's gonna be hard to take them out. Uh. Seemed like pretty much a whole volley was able to take them down, though. Yeah. Not even. You don't really need a whole volley to take them down. Alright, so. So, and then this, this kind of thing that's an issue is they're, they're charging me, so, like, especially because I'm doing eight of these, you can break out of it. It seems like you can't do it in dungeons, though. Uh, but it almost completely took down their shield with a volley, so that's pretty good. I want to keep their shield down. Okay, the shield's down. Let's see how it does against them. Really good. A volley took down pretty much half their health. And because they're charging me, I can't really do anything about it. They're getting their health back really quickly. Oh no, they're on fire. Should clear them out. Okay, yeah. So pretty powerful GM3 against uh, against armor as well. Um, shield and armor does pretty good damage against. It does better damage in my opinion against shield and or sorry against armor than shield only because when they're when they have their shield up you can't prime them. So that's kind of like one of its its benef benefactors is that uh, it has the ability to prime and detonate itself. Which so if we go through checking the bo boxes, is it efficient? Um, I, I would say it's it's more efficient. It, it's definitely efficient. And it's more efficient than Titan's Hail because it primes on its own. Um, realistically, and, and this is the interesting thing about it, um, why most people will run uh, Solvent Green is it's a primer, right? So I, I, can, I can prime with it. But you really don't need to because 
this on its own primes. So I would already with just having green solvent on or solvent green on, I automatically get 200% additional damage, um, gear or, or combo damage, which is what this is doing. When it primes them, it's detonating them, so that's a combo. So I'm going to get that. The issue, uh, well, I'll talk about the issues on the back end, but um, so it's definitely efficient. It's more efficient than Titan's Hail because Titan Hail, I don't even think uh, detonates. It's not, yeah, it just does damage. So more efficient than its non Cataclysm counterpart. And it's honestly the most efficient out of all the gear that, uh, especially for the Ordnance launchers that the, the Colossus has because um, it combos on its own. It, it doesn't need anything. You literally are able to put two gear pieces on the one gear slot so that's why a lot of people end up using it um I, so that yeah efficient uh is it viable i mean it's again it's it's probably the most viable thing in the game because uh it, it combos itself it primes and detonates on its own um the, the only issue i want to go back a little bit to efficiency is kind of like you're stuck here in this animation there's a way out of it by using it by using your uh, support ability and then spamming it again I can't I can't duplicate it in dungeons but I know I can guarantee for fact you can do it in strongholds and and, um, and on missions I've done it all the time but the problem is is typically you're kind of just stuck here and so if they're running at you like that's as close as you're gonna get so you can kind of like get out of it and then try to step back but it's it's just not very uh, it's not very efficient for close range stuff, but that's all the mortars have that issue. So it, it, it compared to other mortars, it's not an issue because they all do that. But compared in general to everything, that's the, the, the limiting factor you're going to come up with uh, against. Um, and then is it fun? Uh, yeah, it's fun. I mean, you just sit here and just take out tons and tons and tons of targets. And, and then the thing about it too is cool is you can like kind of send them wherever you want. So you have control over it after it's it started its animation so it's definitely fun uh, and it's really easy to use there's nothing really complicated about it even if you get stuck here and you're not able to get out of it out of the animation like it's it's still fun to use <laughs> um <clears throat> so uh i mean it's, it's pretty straightforward there's nothing special i mean everything about it is special so that's why it makes it kind of fun to play with, around with uh and then the best thing is you don't have to buy this from the thrift store uh because it, it's a cataclysm weapon it's going to come through the seasonal store so you don't even have to waste your coin on this just wait till the colossus gear comes around and just throw your coin into that it's usually i think on a five week cycle because i'm pretty sure it goes ranger colossus storm interceptor and then universal components um i might be wrong it might be six weeks but i'm not sure what would be on that other week anyways um i'm gonna give it the uh the thumbs up and uh i'm deep feed rescue and i hope to see you guys out in bastion